So you want to create a game with lots of units, buildings and action. But how are you going to manage all that information? Here's an idea with CSV databases. CSV is a delimited text format, usually a comma, though we can choose other symbols as well. Having each line as a sequence of information, we can later be parsed together to be used. This allows an easy way to access and manage that information, because it's all exposed in a spreadsheet. So so, oh, hooray, you got the right idea, but where do you even begin? Let's talk about creating static reference databases from CSV files, which is very important for data-driven games. Why should you consider a database system for your game? To create a structure that can expand easily, here's an example of a CSV data from a legacy project. We can see all the data easily mapped into their respective cells, fairly easy to understand, navigate and change it. Inside Godot, that text data from the CSV file is converted to actual usable data. And this is how it's going to look like inside Godot after it has been imported and grouped together. This type of data you cannot type manually. You need a database system to work with. The structure. So let's see how the system works. It all starts with Godot running a game. Then we're going to compile the data we need to an autoload, which is going to allow us to read and grab data from. It's a global point you can access. To get the text data, we get it through a file manager module, which loads the CSV file. Then later pass that text data to a data compiler module, which is going to interpret that data. The data compiler is also going to use the module constant, which gets CSV file headers and naming conventions. After the data has been categorized, it is going to be stored in the data autoload, which in turn will allow the game to make references back to the data. So now let's talk about the difference and use cases of the dynamic and static data. Static data does not change over time, which is not the case with the dynamic data, which changes over time. An example of static data is anything we want in our game that shouldn't change over time. Things like attributes, unit systems, and even management of assets. This type of information can be stored as a CSV, JSON, or text files. An example of dynamic data is anything that we need to store to not lose when the game restarts. So usually these are save files, achievements, quest stages, etc. This type of information can be saved as JSON, though the good old resource save file is way better for this type of data, because it automatically does a lot of different things. So keep this in mind when designing data structures, which parts you want to be static data and which parts might be dynamic data. For our system to work, we're going to need the three following modules. A module for file managing, which is going to access files or save them. A module for constant managing. We want to group all the constants of the project in a single script. This is going to be very important. And a module to compile data, which is basically the logic of the importer for the CSV data. What we want to do with the text information. We are also going to need to create a autoload to allow access to the data, which will need to be a global access point for the data of the entire game. And we are going to need the CSV text file to be properly maintained to work with this structure. Next, we have the following question, when we should compile the data? If you need the data before the game, then you should compile it using a tool script. However, if not, then we can compile the data when the game starts to run. And finally, here are some ideas. This isn't the only way to handle this system, and you should research other possibilities. Depending on your game, you could use other methods to organize and maintain the data of your game. The trade-offs. There are some trade-offs when you use static data. One of them is that you are locked to the structure you built. This is not good for abstract data management because everything is manually typed and visually exposed as a text. It also prioritizes readability. However, this is very good for design games with simple structures with lots of unique information. Through the spreadsheet is fairly easy to read or edit data. Such as managing either names, properties, descriptions, this system is very good for game design. Another trade-off is that the game logic is separate from the data, so it's going to need an interface always. That is true, the data by itself doesn't do anything, so it's always going to need an interface to manage and create the appropriate structures. So the data comes from the CSV text file, then it goes to an import interface that is going to generate a structure useful for our game. That structure data now should be stored in a global access point, an autoload called game 
data, which allows the game to read from finally. That is a simple example of how the system works. The book example. Let's talk about an issue we have with this system, which is when you want to have unique items. So the problem is if you want unique items from the one statically referenced from the game data. Say we want to define a book with 45 value from a book item data with 30 value. The option A is you actually create another entry, then in the game just reference the new item. So if you only had the data for the book with 30 value and we needed a book with 45, we could add another entry to the CSV text file. Option B is a little more complex. We added the item at runtime. So this turns the item unique. Unique because its base reference will not have that added. So the property we added now has become dynamic data and needs to be stored somewhere. So in this example we change the value of the book from 30 to 45. 45 value now needs to be saved just like the player progress. We could add unique items in a list so they are easier to manage when necessary. Like a dictionary of unique items. Keep in mind we can save and load portions of the item that are unique. Everything else can still be referenced back to the original item ID. So this works like an extension of the data and we save only the extension. Keep in mind this is a fairly common issue, especially with RPGs. This concludes our planning section of the CSV data structures.